So what happened in this recording was that the video files somehow got corrupted in the middle, so instead of the warm welcome you were supposed to get, you get this redo video. So either way, you still get a warm welcome back. Welcome back, class. I'm Mr. Teacher with the SAT Math Video Guide, and I've been away for a long time. So the problems are, a couple of problems are already done from last recording, but I'll still explain through them like what happened in them how to get the answer so number 12 uh, let's go back to number 12 we left off at number 11 a long time ago if you remember in section 5 of test number 3 so from number 12 we begin once again so in the xy plane the line 2x minus 3y equals to c passes through the point 5 comma negative 1 what is the value of C? Well, the way they want to confuse you in, on this problem is that they want you to start thinking of drawing an entire graph, which is usually the correct way to go with these problems, except that this isn't that type of problem, if you know what I'm getting to. But what we need to do now is... Instead of drawing an entire graph, graphing 2x minus 3y equals c, and somehow, in some way, what we need to do is we need to assume that we already have the x and y values of that one point. So we can just plug them in into the x and the y of the equation. So x is equal to 5, so 2 times 5 minus 3 times y, or negative 1, is equal to c. 10, uh, 2 times 5 is 10, negative 3 times negative 1 is 3, 10 plus 3 is equal to C, and therefore C is equal to 13, and that's the correct answer. Now we'll head over to number 13, where there are girls and boys galore, in, but, um, so the question here asks, the scatter plot above shows the number of male and female students at Central High School from 1990 to 1999. In which one of the years shown was the absolute value of the difference between the numbers of male and female students the greatest? So they just want to know uh, in which year were there way more girls than boys or way more boys than girls. So what you can do is you can draw a line across the graph of y is equal to x. So Therefore, now we know that any point that's on the line is going to be equal. What I mean by that is, any, since it's a scatter plot, the point represents the num both the number of girls and the number of boys. So, when the point is directly on the line, which is y equals x, so, for instance, this 1990 point, which is at 600 at 600, and it, it lies on the point, so we know that there are the same number of boys as there are girls and we can cancel that out without even checking any further because we can see that there are other numbers that aren't on the line. So now we cross off 1990 and 1999 which also happens to be on the point. Now how I like to see the rest of this problem is that since it's a graph you don't need to assume, assume distances. You already know that distances are equal. If for instance, half of this box, let's consider the length of the boxes to be 1. So one side of the box will be 0 0.5, another side will be 0 0.5. Well, if you uh, half it, that is. So 0 0.5 and 0 0.5. And that's what we're going to use to uh, cancel out the rest. So we know that, uh, excuse me, we know that uh, the from the rest of the years, each of them aren't on the line. So we need to count how many of these 0 0.5 steps do we have to take before we reach the line. So I we need to look a bit carefully because I crossed off most of them because they weren't the correct answer. But let's start with the easiest one to see. 1997. So we assume that the white line is on the cross right here. So that's a 0 0.5 distance. That's the biggest we have so far. So we can consider 97 as a possible answer. 98 is also 0 0.5 away. 
96 is 0 0.5 away, 93 is 0 0.5 away, and 95 is 0 0.5 away. Now, 91 is also 0 0.5 away. Now, you can see I circled these two because they are not 0 0.5 away. 94 is we can go up 0 0.5 and left 0 0.5. So that's a total of 1. So we know that all of the 0.5s that we just counted are the wrong answers. Their, their absolute value isn't big enough. And now let's finally look at 19, uh, sorry, 92. We need to reach the line, the white line. So we go 0 0.5, 1, and 1.5. So uh, 1992, the length of 1992 to reach the white median line is, is the longest. Uh, so we know that 1992 is the correct answer. Now to check what you can do is at the, in the year 1992 the number of girls was 800 and the number of boys was 650 so the absolute difference between them is 150 but in the year 1994 the, the number of girls was equal to 650 and the number of boys was equal to 750 who's apparently also pink <laughs> and the absolute difference is a hundred so we know that this metric also really did count basically all the difference was that the length of the square was a hundred and half of it was 50 that's how we figured this out so now we'll move on to number 14 which is also written out um, so number 14 is just this equation, 5 times a number is the same as the number added to 5. What is the number? So we write it out, 5 times a number is equal to the number plus 5. Oh, I was about to sneeze, that's why it went so suddenly silent. Uh, so to solve this, let's just subtract p from both sides, so 4p is equal to 5. And now let's divide 4 on both sides, divide by 4 on both sides, so p is equal to 5 over 4, or 1.25. Now the reason this question can be confusing is what I tried to draw over here. Basically what the students would do is divide the 5 from 5p 5 at the beginning of the equation, so it would end up with something, uh, something like this, p is equal to p plus 5 divided by 5 and then if you're under pressure because you don't have much time and this is number 14 so it's close to the end but not very close so you will you might be under pressure uh, you know you might make a careless mistake you might cancel out the fives but you didn't do anything to the p so you would end up with p is equal to p divided by 5 and it just messes up the entire thing so just do it simple, like you would do in linear algebra. And so, we return to the problem where my video file corrupted. Number 15. That, okay. So, number 15 is this angle drawing, which says, in the figure above, six segments intersect at O. Line OD bisects angle AOF. Line OC bisects angle AOE and line OB bisects angle AOD. If X is equal to 40 and Y is equal to 30, what is the measure of angle BOE? And it's not to scale, which makes it even more confusing. So, we need to find the value measure of angle BOE. So, what I've solved up till now is, well, X is equal to 40, which is the angle measure of AOB and angle AOB is equal to angle BOD because line OB bisects angle AOD. So we know that angle BOD is also equal to 40. Now when you add 40 and 40 up obviously you get 80 and reason why you added it up because angle AOD which you just found which is 80 should be equal to angle DOF because line OD bisects the entire thing, angle AOF. So we know that the, dis, uh, the angle measure over here will also be 80. But now we know that Y is equal to 30. So we also know, that was a 
that was, I hit the microphone, that's why the sound went up anyways, so, the reason, the reason, uh, so, this will be 50, reason being that angle DOF is equal to 80, and we know Y is equal to 30, so that small angle, angle DOE, is equal to 50. Now, we just need to find the measure of angle BOE, so, let, let me highlight that in a color we haven't used yet. So we need to find angle B O E. So that's 50 plus 40. So that's just 90. And 90 is the correct answer in this case. So I believe, okay, I believe I can do one more problem because this, this video seems pretty fast because I haven't been drawing any of my problems. But because I've already drawn them, drawn, drawn, anyways, so there's a sequence, no, nope, not 22, just 2 twice, and then 3 thrice, and then 4, 4 times, and so on, it goes on, okay, so it says, all positive integers appear in the sequence above, and each positive integer k appears in the sequence k times. So we can see that 2 appears 2 times, 3 appears 3 times, 4 appears 4 times. Um, in the sequence, each term after the first is greater than or equal to each of the terms before it. So if the integer 12 first appears in the sequence as the nth term, what is the value of n? Okay. Each term after the first is greater than or equal to... Okay, so I know what that means. So, each number you write is basically either equal to the previous number or it's the next number in line. So, something I think is very useful in remembering is the addition of all these numbers because that's how we're going to be doing this. So, the number of ones is just one. So we can add that with the number of twos, which is two. So this is going to be equal to the number of terms written down. So the number of threes is three, the number of fours is four, and so on. So one thing I find helpful to remember, and it's actually helped me quite a bit in saving time mostly, but is to remember the sum of the numbers 1 through 10 and to do this you don't really need to know the rule I believe there is an equation you can use to find it in a pinch but you don't need to use that because all you need to do is that you just need to remember that the first the sum of the first 10 numbers which is 55 so 1 plus 2 is 3 plus 3 is 6 plus 4 is 10 plus 5 is 15 plus 6 is 21, plus 7 is 28, plus 8 is 36, and so on and so forth. 36 plus 9 is 45, and 45 plus 10 is 55. So if you remember that, then you know that the last 10 that will be written is the 50, 55th term. And then comes 11, which comes 11 times, and so forth. Okay, so... If 11 comes 11 times, we know the last 11 before the 12, this will be the 55th plus 11th term. The 11, that is not the 12. So 55 plus 11 is 66, so it's the 66th term. And it asks, well, if the integer 12 first appears in the sequence as the nth term, so the first appearance of 12 is the 66th plus 1th term. So it's the 67th term. And that is the correct answer. Well, not 67th, but 67. And so, yeah, I will keep it there. Um, the reason why I don't want to keep going is the last question involves a parabola, and I think that those do require a bit more explaining than usual. So I'm going to keep it up to there. Uh, I hope you guys, uh, I hope this helps you with your math preparation. I always make the mistake. I hope you guys enjoyed. Well, I do hope you guys enjoyed, but most important is that you actually learn from it. So, and I will see you guys soon with just the final 
two questions. It's it's a lot less, but those are quite confusing, confusing questions. So I'll talk to you guys later.